Homelessness is one of Seattle's biggest social issues. In 2021, King County reported a number of roughly 40,000 cases of homelessness in the area. However, the topic of homelessness is barely talked about enough in our society, especially when most conversations surrounding it involves major stigma and the villainization of unhoused people. In light of this stigma, I ventured out onto the streets to catch a glimpse of life through the eyes of homeless people. There, I met a few folks who let me in on their stories. The first person I met was Danny, a veteran who is living in his motor home. In 2004, Danny was discharged from the army, which led him to becoming unhoused. How long have you been living in your motor home for? Uh, well, I've been in the motor home for like, not, th not that long actually. I just yeah. got Social Security uh, last year and I bought this motor home, but uh, I've been homeless though ever since 2004. Another person that I met was David. <laughs> David is a former chef who became homeless due to being evicted from an apartment in 2016. So it was 2015, 2016 in Colorado and uh, there was a girl that was living upstairs. She just looked like she had her head together. She's an artist and all this stuff. And I, you know, knocked her on the door a couple of times, wanted to get to know her. And the police got called out because they said I was harassing her. So the police come out and they're talking with her, talking with me, and they're like, he's not harassing her. All he did was ask her to dinner twice. I didn't do anything wrong. The guy goes and then he goes and tells me that I have to be out. So I told him I'm not going to pay my rent because I figure that, you know, and it was stupid. I, I, I kick myself in the ass all the time for this. Like in David's case, unwanted life situations can cause people to lose their residency and fall into homelessness. While looking for another person to interview, I bumped into Ekran, a mother who became homeless while running away from an abusive relationship. I'm not homeless right now, but I was homeless for over five years. I left my apartment for my ex-husband because he was an abuser and I run to another apartment. I, I got a Section 8 low-income apartment and I didn't know he walked away from the apartment. That put me in a bad credit. So I couldn't get a, or rent a place or ask for home, what do you call it, Section 8 or low-income apartment because of that. After I explained to her that I was creating a video about homelessness, Ekran introduced me to two other people, Travis, who was formerly homeless, and Johnny, a currently unhoused person whose situation was related to drug use. We got lost in the, the drug world. Yeah. And it's, just, it's, a, it's a circle that we can't get out of. We try to, but we're so used to the environment and the uh, sea life of bringing people around us so much, we feel like, we feel lonely. And that's pretty much why we, uh, you know, do it. it's hard to quit. When I asked these folks about what it's like living life on the street, they expressed that there is a sense of freedom from the capitalistic system that is in place. How was life before, you know, losing your residency? Worse. Worse? Why is that? Because I had to do things. I, I had to pay rent for substandard equipment. Aren't you happy with this life right now? Are you happy or you're it's, not happy? Okay, I'll tell you something. I woke up one morning and I was in my tent. I had no one to call, no one to call me, no place to be. And the first time in my whole life, I felt free. I'm free. Not You're free? You feel free? I feel that people are. Um, that means useless. I feel that the world is is on. Is uh, we call it. We're all um. We're all slaves. Because you're basically slave to your bank. For the rest of your life. However. Living with homelessness is not as easy as one might think. Out of all the things that unhoused people would have to worry about, safety and security are two major parts. The thing is, is people homeless will steal from homeless. You know, it's like, come on, we live in the same world. Why do that treat one another like that, you know? Like, Somebody stole my shoe last night <laughs> from in my tent. They stole my shoe. <laughs> They're probably walking around like, you know, <laughs> One shoe. <laughs> uh, right around New Year's time, there was this car that would come around. Oh, this guy, he was always driving for cars. But he, he'd drive by, shoot our houses with pellet guns and stuff and pull it out of windows and shit. Shout out two of my windows, you know? Uh, 
I have no clue who the fuck this dude is, you know? Talking to these folks made me realize the everyday things I take for granted. According to them, a big inconvenience of living unhoused is not having access to technological devices. At night, what do you do when you go to bed? You charge, you plug your phone in. It's at 100% in the morning. A lot of people don't have that. To do. So there's times, you know, I you know, know homeless people who, and I've even been there before, where your phone is dead for two days. If I had unlimited Wi-Fi, I could, I could do online gaming, and that make, that brings some money getting online gaming teams and stuff. So when there's no Wi-Fi, what do you do for entertainment? Not have entertainment. Not have entertainment. <laughs> So you just kind of... Being bored and, and, and completely not distracted is horrible. During our conversations, the topic of personal hygiene came up. These people explained that what people don't understand about homelessness is that small mundane things like showering can be a very big task for someone without a home. So when you live in a motorhome, how do you uh, shower? Um, I have a dog, I don't shower. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. Dog with a pack mentality. Uh, it, it, you change your smell and they get pissed off. Uh, there were times where I didn't. If you really had to, if I was if I was disgusted in like my hygiene for that day, I would go find a standalone bathroom, lock the door, un you know, undress what I had to, and you know, get all new find some soap and some hot water. You know? have a shower. How long take you? 15 minutes? We take 15 minutes to walk to the place to have a shower. Then we got a waiting line. And then we have a shower. And you have to walk back. So two hours to have a shower. It takes people an hour in the morning. An hour to do? An hour for what you do in the morning to get ready for school. It takes us all day. Towards the end of the conversations, I asked these people what they want to tell others when it comes to homelessness. Their answer was simple, to have compassion. So I have a final question for you. Um, what do you want to tell ha people with houses about unhoused people? You're one paycheck away from being us. Would, would you be able to picture the world as rosy and lovely if you didn't have a house for 10 years, if you had to live like this every day? We can't judge people by these little clips of what we see. Yeah. And uh, when you're kind of like uh, bound to that life, you have to make compromising choices that like, you don't even want to. I want people to see if you eat, if you wake up and you're breathing and you're eating and you're taking a shower, there's people that don't have that opportunities. At least have sympathy. Don't waste the water. You know, don't waste food. There's people behind you that you can help with. These interactions proved that homeless people are not just mere victims of the system they're in, nor are they less human than anyone else out there. I hope that through this video, people will be able to see homelessness through a different lens and gain more compassion for our unhoused neighbors.